Someone just sent us a question on our help email asking how would they put a label on a rotation that would be in line with a linear fit like you see here. And I'm gonna show you two different ways. There's an easy way using a labels command that, again, it's quick to do, but the issue with this is you can see how the text stays at the same angle because you've set, setting the angle of the text as, um, it's, 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 it's an annotation at a specific angle in pixels, but it's not in data units. So I'm gonna show you a second way that takes a little bit more effort, but if you wanna be able to easily change the aspect ratio, then you can set this up with a connect command and the label will stay in the same um, orientation as the line itself. So first doing this the easy way. Let me do this actually, uh, first of all, I'm going to copy this data and then just do a new uh, data graph file. I'll start by pasting in my data and making a points and a fit command. And again, the what we're looking for here is a label that goes at the same slope as this line. And if you go under the label button, you see the pop-up that shows you there's a text command, which I'll just go ahead and show you this for a moment, which it make this a little bit bigger. Uh, the text command does have options for rotate, rotating the text, um, has actually a lot of options for how you wanna locate text, but it just, in terms of rotation, has a clockwise or a counterclockwise rotation. Here again, we wanna be able to freely rotate the text, and that command currently does not have that. If you go under the label command, however, add one of those, the label command is really handy because I can drag it around. Um, and it also is sticky, meaning that once I connect it to my line here, I can move my text, the arrow stays in place, and it also sort of sticks to my best fit line. If I want this to be a label on this line, um, then I have a choice of whether I draw the arrow or not. And for this, uh, I think the best in, way to do this is actually to change this. So instead of drawing this uh, away from the pinpoint, the XY coordinate that this is located in, I can go ahead and say at start, and then my location of my text is, um, it no longer has the arrow, and it's a little bit easier to, to place it right next to the line. Let's go ahead and expand this out. And actually, let me make this a little bit longer so we can really see this. There we go. So again, I want to rotate this really easy. There is an option for rotation right here. Currently it's horizontal. There are a number of different degree options, but I can also just say specified and then rotate that around a point, get it to the angle I want, and then I can move that in place. And that's it. That's um, very handy. Now the issue here with using the label command, it's pretty quick uh, and interactive, but if I change my graph in terms of the size, the label command stays at that same angle. So that angle is really in, in oriented in the pixels of the graph, not the data units of the graph itself. Uh, so if you're going to use the labels command to do this, I'd suggest actually first make sure you set your size to what you would really like the graph to be. Um, then you can place it you know, properly. You might also want to um, scale down the font a little bit from the main font, depending on what you're doing. And you can go ahead and rotate this um, into place, get it at an angle you like, and, um, and then you're all set. So the next one we're going to do is using the connect command. Let's go ahead and start this next one by cloning the graph we started with. We can go ahead and delete the label command. And what I'm going to do here is actually change the size now back to automatic for this one with the connect command. And let's go ahead and add the connect command itself. That's under the draw menu, add a connect command. And what you see is that the connect command allows you actually to specify directly on the command itself uh, a starting X and Y location, and then the final X and Y location. 
you can just go ahead and type these in if you like. So we could go from uh, 3, 5 for our x1 and x2, uh, or x, sorry, x1, y1, and we could go to um, 6, uh, 7 for the next one. Actually, that, that's not, the angle isn't too bad there. Uh, but we're going to do this in a much more sophisticated way. But first, before we set this up completely, I just want to show you how you add the label into this. So when you expand the connect command, there is a labels text menu that you can add in a label to. And when you do this, the label by default will be at the beginning of the connect line. Let me actually make this a little thicker so you can see this for sure. But we have options as to how we place this label. You can see this here in the label position menu. You can have it uh, be at the start, at the middle, or at the middle gap. So you can see middle gap is can be kind of an interesting look. Um, we can go ahead and do this in the middle. And when we do that, we get a little bit of an offset. So I want this line to be on my fit line that I did here. And the way that I'm going to do this is to actually extract as variables from my best fit line. So I clicked on my gear menu, extract as variable, extract the slope, and extract the intercept. I can go ahead and quickly name these. Now I have these two variables that I can use in calculating where this line's going to go. And the way that I uh, found this easiest to do is to actually also set up variables for x1 and x2. Um, you could also just type these in, but this I think makes it a little bit easier. So I'm going to eyeball here that I want this to go from, let's say, 3 to 6 in this case for my x1 and my x2. And then in my connect command, I will just type in these variables into this location. So it will set those exactly. And then I can use my equation here for a line to determine my y1 and my y2. Copy and paste this. And now it's right on the line. And the benefit here is when I change my aspect ratio, again, it stays right with the line the way I would like it to be. So I might want to not have it be quite so thick, so I can go ahead and make this thinner. And, um, and that's sort of it. I can change my X1 and my Y2s, uh, sorry, my X1 and my X2 here, even somewhat dynamically if I want to do that. And I guess because this is, uh, this is drawing this line, it's actually making my line look longer, so maybe I don't want to have it quite that long. I can make this a bit a uh, bit smaller, but then move this up. So you, so by creating this, it also gives you a little bit of flexibility in terms of where you place this in a more interactive way um, than if you just were, you know, trying to type these numbers into the connect command itself. And for this graph, I can also change it to be specified if I like. And again, it's it's going to stay in line with my graph. I might want to make it a little bit smaller in terms of the relative size of the text on this label. Then the pixel offset, again, I might want to adjust, but that's it. I have my um, label of my line that will stay parallel to the best fit line. And even better than that, if I change my data, let's go ahead and make some of these numbers much larger. Again, you can see how the slope had changed, but my um, my label is staying completely uh, parallel to this line. So we've created, in essence, somewhat of a template that you can use um, for this type of a uh, of a of a label within a within a line. So you can create this yourself or use the the file that we had. You can see how it actually jumps a little bit between the um, top and the bottom there. Um, but in any case, hopefully this, this will be helpful. Uh, we're going to make a similar file available on the online examples. And um, if you have any other questions, let us know.